Scoop Canada brings you another shocking revelation that further tarnishes the credibility of Justin Trudeau's liberal government. Conservative MP Rick Perkins has exposed a massive conflict of interest involving Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo. According to Perkins, Gilbo is a current shareholder in the venture capital investment firm Cycle Capital, whose companies have received over $200 million from the scandal-plagued Liberal Green Slush Fund. The Environment Minister is already under fire for his $30 billion carbon tax cover-up. He was a lobbyist for Cycle Capital. Cycle Capital companies got more than $200 million from the Liberal Green Slush Fund. Wow. Now we learn he is still a big shareholder in Cycle Capital. And since becoming Environment Minister, Cycle Capital companies have gotten another $17 million from the Green Slush Fund. Liberal insiders getting rich on taxpayer money, a carbon tax cover-up, the Environment Minister profiting from the... This bombshell raises serious questions about how far the corruption within Trudeau's administration goes and underscores the urgent need for transparency and accountability. The controversy centers on Cycle Capital, a firm that invests in clean technology and sustainable development. While these objectives align with the Liberal government's environmental policies, the fact that Gilbo, a sitting minister, stands to benefit financially from the very initiatives he oversees is deeply troubling. This conflict of interest undermines the integrity of the government's environmental efforts and raises doubts about the ethical standards of Trudeau's administration. Rick Perkins' revelation is not just an isolated incident, but part of a broader pattern of misconduct and questionable practices within the Liberal government. From the $300, 19 million funnel to companies owned by Green Slush Fund directors to the multiple criminal investigations into federal contracting, including the $60 million arrive can scandal, it is clear that corruption and mismanagement are rampant. Also, discover our exclusive collection of mugs, hoodies, and a variety of daily accessories designed for Canada Conservative Party supporters. Show your pride with our conservative theme products at affordable prices. Enjoy free delivery across Canada. Rick Perkins has leveled serious accusations against Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo, further escalating scrutiny on the Liberal government's environmental policies. Perkins highlighted Gilbo's previous role as a lobbyist for Cycle Capital, a venture capital firm that invests in clean technology. According to Perkins, companies associated with Cycle Capital received over $200 million from what he termed the Liberal Green Slush Fund, adding fuel to the controversy. Perkins the revealed... Minister is already under fire for his $30 billion carbon tax cover-up. He was a lobbyist for Cycle Capital. Cycle Capital companies got more than $200 million from the Liberal Green Slush Fund. Wow. Now we learn he is still a big shareholder in Cycle Capital. And since becoming Environment Minister, Cycle Capital companies have gotten another $17 million from the Green Slush Fund. Liberal insiders getting rich on taxpayer money, a carbon tax cover... ...that Gilbo remains a significant shareholder in Cycle Capital. Since assuming office as Environment Minister, companies affiliated with Cycle Capital have reportedly received an additional $17 million from the same fund. This revelation raises concerns about potential conflicts of interest and the ethical implications of a minister profiting from initiatives he oversees. Perkins' accusations come at a precarious time for the Liberal government, already embroiled in scandals related to federal contracting and environmental policies. The allegation that insiders are enriching themselves through taxpayer-funded programs aimed at combating climate change further erodes public trust in government accountability and transparency. The ongoing saga underscores broader criticisms of liberal governance under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau characterized by accusations of cronyism and fiscal mismanagement. Critics argue that the repeated instances of alleged corruption reflect a pattern within the Trudeau administration, where political connections and financial interests appear to take precedence over public service. A frustrated Canadian expresses frustration and incredulity over Prime Minister Trudeau's apparent financial gains, despite criticism of his understanding of numbers and budget management skills. The tweet suggests a perception that Trudeau's personal wealth has increased significantly, contrasting sharply with doubts about his ability to comprehend financial matters or balance budgets effectively. This demand underscores the public's expectation that elected officials should be held to high standards of ethical conduct and financial accountability. The tweet's frustration likely resonates with many Canadians who prioritize integrity and honesty in governance, particularly when it involves taxpayer money or public resources. 
The revelation that cannabis retailers owe a staggering $270 million in unpaid taxes to the government has sparked significant concern and scrutiny. One particularly alarming detail is the involvement of an insolvent company that includes Trudeau liberal MP Yasser Nakvi as a paid director. The situation underscores serious issues within the cannabis industry regarding financial transparency and compliance with tax obligations. The unpaid taxes represent a substantial amount owed to the government highlighting potential deficiencies in tax reporting and payment practices among cannabis businesses. The inclusion of Yasir Nakvi, a prominent figure within the Liberal Party of Canada, as a director in one of the insolvent companies adds a layer of political sensitivity to the issue. It raises questions about due diligence in corporate governance and potential conflicts of interest, especially given Nakvi's role as a paid director while the company faces financial difficulties. The failure to remit such a significant sum in taxes not only impacts government revenues, but also raises concerns about the overall financial health and regulatory compliance of cannabis retailers. It underscores the need for robust oversight and enforcement measures to ensure that all businesses, including those in the cannabis sector, fulfill their tax obligations promptly and transparently. Moreover, this development could fuel broader discussions about the regulation of the cannabis industry and the effectiveness of current tax enforcement mechanisms. It may prompt a recent statement regarding the government's approach to oil and gas emissions has sparked controversy and skepticism. Gilbo denies imposing a production cap on oil and gas, instead suggesting that the government is merely aligning with companies' aspirations to achieve carbon neutrality. His assertion that draft regulations haven't even been seen raises concerns about transparency and proactive climate action planning. Moreover, Gilbo's statement about carbon neutrality by 2050 has been met with skepticism regarding the feasibility and sincerity of such commitments. Critics argue that without concrete regulatory frameworks and stringent enforcement, these goals risk becoming empty promises. The lack of clear regulatory drafts further exacerbates doubts about the government's ability to effectively manage environmental policies and ensure compliance from industry stakeholders. In contours of what the regulations book they don't they haven't even seen draft regulations so and, and all we're doing with with, with the oil and gas uh, emissions cap is uh, is taking companies at their word they said they wanted to be carbon neutral by by, by 2050 and what we're doing with these regs is, is we're ensure that you know no one waits until 2048 to, to start putting in place the measures that are necessary to be carbon neutral by 2050. So you still don't believe the essence a... Gilbo's denial of a production cap on oil and gas coupled with vague assurances about carbon neutrality underscores a broader pattern of insufficient oversight and accountability in environmental governance.